What's going on you guys, Over Jesse here. In today's video, we're doing some print comparisons between budget 3D printers, and more specifically, a $200 resin 3D printer and a $200 FDM 3D printer, and seeing if there's any actual difference in the print results that we're gonna get from these machines. Let's check it out. All right, so as I mentioned, we're gonna be taking a look at the Monoprice MP Mini SLA 3D printer. This thing goes for about 200 bucks online and is a absolutely crazy entry point into resin 3D printing. It has been extremely popular here over the last few videos on my channel, as well as just been blowing up online. So I wanted to take a look at the print results that I could get from an SLA resin 3D printer that is in the same price range as something that I can get from the FDM side of things. So I wanted to be comparing this against the Ender 3. The Ender 3 ranges typically around $200 or less. Uh, obviously the build volumes are gonna differ on these. The Ender 3 has a much larger build volume compared to the MP uh, Mini here, which is no surprise, most resin 3D printers do not have very large build volumes. And if they do have large build volumes, you're looking at probably five to $10,000 more. So uh, that's sort of be expected here for this size machine. So what I wanted to do was find some models online that I could print with, print them in the same uh, size scale, and then try to match up as best I could the print qualities of them and uh, just run some test prints and see how things turned out, ranging from simple files that have no, no need for supports versus files that are going to need require supports. Uh, both of these machines are extremely popular with folks that are gonna be creating miniatures. So I did use a few models of that and I also went with a statue bust file uh, that we'll be taking a look at here in just a minute. So let's jump right into it and start taking a look at some of the print files and the results that I was getting from uh, testing these out. All right, so the first file that I wanna take a look at is this Nine-Tailed Demon character uh, by Juka that's available over on my mini factory. Over on the Ender 3, I printed this at 0.2 millimeter layer height, and I think 10% infill. And then over on the MP Mini, printed this at 0 0.05 millimeters so i was trying to see just a, in terms of comparison at this level this typically is what i'm personally printing at is 0.2 millimeters on my fdm printers for you know 99 percent of the time that's what i'm printing at and then for my even my sla resin 3d printers i'm typically printing at about uh, 0.05 millimeters so i mean it's it, there should definitely be a noticeable difference between the two uh, i think both files printed very nicely i'm really liking how the ender 3 print turned out to be honest uh, i'm really really happy and honestly need to be printing more on this machine this thing is cranking out some really nicely detailed uh, parts for such a small file. I should say that I ended up scaling this down to 25% of the size of the original size of the file that's available over on my mini factory. Uh, the default size was way too large to actually print on the MP mini. I believe it would have been fine to print here on the Ender 3, but again, was just trying to get it so something that I can do sort of apples to apples, apples to oranges. <laughs> At least it's a fruit to fruit. I should also mention that I was with all these tests, I was using the Sculpt resin from Seertech. And then for the Ender 3, I was using the Uncle Jesse Ziltech PLA. And again, I feel like I have my settings pretty well dialed in uh, on these machines. And I would say, you know, both seem to turn out fairly nice, but obviously the resin printer, it's just a lot cleaner. It's a lot smoother of a finish than I'm going to get with the Ender. Uh, if you're looking to do minis, I mean, this is still perfectly usable, to be honest. There's nothing wrong with this. It's going to take a little bit more work and effort sanding wise. And the uh, the MP Mini, the, the details came out very nice. However, I am noticing in almost all of these prints that you'll notice that I was getting on the MP, I'm getting a little bit of a duplication of some of the parts. Like if I get a close up here of the tails, you'll notice the tail has almost two tails for every one tail. 
uh, which is a little odd. I'm not exactly sure what's causing that, but it's something to be aware of that might occur if you end up going with this machine. I, I have not been seeing this on anything like the Photon or anything like that. So it might be something that's very much specific to the MP Mini. The next files here are by Printed Obsession. These were part of his Kickstarter campaign, and I believe these are actually available now on my mini factory for you to buy and download as well. These were miniatures that were printed in multiple pieces and then had to be assembled. This required supports to be on both the resin and the FDM parts. And funny enough, after I assembled them, I was not able to get the heads on either of them. I don't know what I did wrong. Maybe I was supposed to glue the heads on first, but I just could not get the heads to fit on either of the bodies with the wings. Uh, I would say the MP Mini definitely picked up a lot more of the details than the Ender 3. However, I did end up running into some print issues with the uh, the resin print here. Some of the wing files, it looks on the back side of the print, the supports didn't actually adhere correctly and the wings didn't fully print. So again, uh, from the front side, you don't really notice it at all, but if you flip this around, you're gonna notice there were some issues with this actual print. And one of the objectives I was trying to do here is just really do a single print for each of these and test how they are. And if I was running into needing to do multiple prints, I was gonna call that out to you guys, but really only ran into this one issue with the supports failing here, and then obviously the heads not being able to stick on. Some of the other just call outs that I was noticing is the swords are are so much cleaner, uh, visually cleaner on the MP Mini than the Ender 3, which I mean, I guess is no, no big surprise. Uh, the Ender 3 though, I think picked up a lot more detail than I thought it was going to do. And again, the Ender 3 prints were at 0.2 millimeters and the MP Mini was at 0.5 millimeters. So I was just very impressed with the details that the, that the Ender 3 was actually picking up and able to produce on such a small, such a small file. Again, both of these pretty impressive and I'd honestly be happy with either of these if I was in the market for a 3D printer. All right, and the last one here is a Loki bust by Photos Mint. This is a file that you should be able to print with absolutely no supports, which is very, very cool. It's a really awesome file. The details on this look really great, and it's also gonna go great with the Thor bust from Photos Mint that I've also printed from Thor Ragnarok. Uh, yeah, I would say both prints turned out very, very, very nice. No issues in terms of not running with supports. I will say, though, that I did hollow out the MP Mini, and there were supports on the inside of this particular file that you can sort of see. I'll try to get some close-ups of this here uh, just to support the internal structures of this, which is a little bit different than the FDM side of things. But again, I think both results turn out very, very, very nicely. Again, both printed at 0.2 millimeter and 0.5 millimeters. Uh, I, again, we're just trying to go with something a little bit larger than the other prints. This honestly is maxing out the vertical build volume of the MP Mini. So you're really looking at a very small build volume in comparison to the Ender 3. So I guess it all, it really comes down to what you're interested in 3D printing. For some people, the Ender 3 is a great entry point into just general 3D printing printing and getting going with things. Some people might want a resin 3D printer for jewelry making or making these miniatures or other smaller projects and this might fit their exact needs. What I was trying to really do is just show some comparisons because I was getting comments of, hey, I'm not really seeing any visual difference between something I can get off the MP Mini versus something I could get off of the Ender 3. So just really wanna do a apples to oranges. I kind of like that approach comparison to this because it's not the same technology. It's not gonna get the same results, but I think both of them were very good. Obviously, I'm gonna get a lot cleaner results here on the MP Mini. I would say as well on this Loki bust, I was getting some odd layer line separations here. Uh, throughout this print and it's kind of visible on the chest and I believe it was on the head area where there's it looks like it might have just been sticking a little bit too much to the the FEP vat 
uh, instead of the build plate and separating during the print process. I, I, again, not entirely sure. I'm not the most knowledgeable when it comes to <laughs> 3D printing in general. I love 3D printing. I love making videos for you guys. I'm not the technical guru uh, that you should be going to by any means. Uh, but I just wanted to make this video for you guys, show off some print comparisons. Hopefully it gave you some insight into the differences between uh, resin 3D prints and uh, FDM 3D prints for budget printers and the kind of print quality results that you could get from them. Obviously, again, you're gonna get a lot bigger build volume with the Ender 3 for that price point of around $200 than you're gonna get on the MP Mini for $200. But again, if you're printing really small things, this resin approach for the really high details and smoothed out features of those prints might be a good advantage over something that you can get from the Ender 3. I'll have links down below to both printers if you're interested in picking them up. And I just wanna say thanks again for watching you guys and I will see you next time. I know. By the way, if you're interested in more videos on the MP Mini or the Ender 3, I have some links down below to those as well. Also for the Ender 3, make sure to check out Chuck Hellebuck's YouTube page. I will have links down below. He has some awesome videos detailing just different intricacies of this printer. Also for more videos on 3D printed miniatures, make sure to check out 3D printed tabletop. He has an awesome channel that details the ins and outs of printing miniatures. So if you're not already aware of that channel, I'll have links down below to that as well. Hey, thanks again for watching guys. I'll see you next time. Bye now.